Um, so this presentation is called If I Only Had a Heart. Uh, if any of you went and looked up disco, uh, there's a uh, sort of like a video teaser about discos. This is also the name of the, uh, the disco teaser. Um, the idea is that we want to make sure that we're uh, putting the heart in or keeping the heart in the work that we do for our livelihood. So I want to just do one really quick, what the heck is Geeks Without Bounds and what do I have to do with any of this? Because uh, almost all the rest of the talk is about um, work that other people have done. So you might be left going, well, why is she doing this? Um, so Geeks Without Bounds is a nonprofit that supports civic and humanitarian open source projects. The reason open source is so important to us is that uh, a project that is developed to solve a challenge in one place or time can then be forked so that it can be used by others with slightly or very different needs. Um, and by keeping everything open source, it helps reduce uh, the development time and, and the development costs for other similar and, and related projects. We run hackathons, um, which if you're familiar with the idea of, of hackathons as they've become in the last few years, people think of them as these competitions with big prizes. We really stick to the original version of hackathons, which is really about a volunteer opportunity to work on open source projects and move them forward. Um, and we also use that very much to bring new people into existing projects. So it's not just about inventing something new over the weekend that you're going to forget forever, but actually taking uh, a long term approach to the work that we're doing across many hackathons. We have an accelerator program that uh, helps mentor project teams to take a project from its initial prototype idea through to figuring out how they're going to become sustainable and, and hopefully finding them some sort of funding source or other way to be able to continue doing their work. Um, and we also do deployment uh, support where we actually go into the field to help take the technology that's been developed through this process and put it into action, whether that's setting up uh, wireless mesh networks in places that have no access to wired internet, or whether that's uh, taking a, a water uh, system maintenance tool and helping deploy that across an entire country so that people can uh, use their phones to let their local water companies know that there's a problem with the uh, the water pipes somewhere between uh, a well and their public water point. <coughs> so what we have to do with the disco is that we have we have an affinity for the project in general because we're an organization that um, Legally, we're a nonprofit in Washington state, so we can't legally be called a uh, cooperative. There's only one state in the US where a nonprofit can be a nonprofit cooperative under sort of its legal definition. Um, but internally, we have always functioned as a, a worker, organized worker managed collaborative project. Um, so we have a, a tight affinity to the whole idea of everything that we're about to talk about in terms of cooperatives, in terms of care work and love work, and, and also in terms of um, supporting different projects to be independent and work together in federations. Uh, and so Stocko and, and the crew with Guerrilla Media Collective uh, tapped us to help out with developing the software to make discos run. So that's why I'm here and how I'm connected to all this. So we're gonna explore technology, care work, and distributive 
cooperative organizations. So when you think about your, your brain, your brain is a network, right? Um, but we're also, whether we're talking about the earth and, and its network of life, or whether we're talking about businesses and economies, there are many different kinds of, of networks and all of the connections between us. And these days we also have our computer networks that are spreading into every aspect of our life. Uh, whether that's the, the internet of trouble, uh, I mean, the internet of things, or, uh, you know, just websites, Zoom calls, everything we do is now connected digitally online as well. Um, we need a, fe a cooperative feminist commons oriented alternative to DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. So why do we say that? So the DAOs are based on blockchain technology. You program your contracts and then the, the contracts that are programmed basically manage your organization, right? Um, and there is a, a techno utopian or a techno optimistic idea that if we can program things correctly, that we don't have to trust each other as humans. A lot of the things that have been written and discussed about anything touching the blockchain is about creating zero trust situations. You don't have to trust anybody because it's all handled algorithmically. But we start from a, a point of view that A, um, it, it's a bit too much to trust the algorithm because even the algorithms are created by humans. Um, and B, that uh, not only can we trust other humans, but we actually need to trust other humans. So how do we combine the need for trusting humans with the reality that humans aren't always trustworthy and so part of the answer to that is to have sort of different spheres of influence. Um, distributed cooperative organizations uh, would be DCOs, but that is really boring um, and very much not in the spirit of the way that we work or think. And so of course we're discos because we like to dance. What kind of a revolution would it be without a disco ball? So you can find out a lot more about everything I'm going to talk about at uh, disco.coop, including the manifesto and uh, links to the wiki that explains in much more depth what uh, discos are all about, how they work, how you can start one, uh, and how you can get connected with us if you'd like to become a pilot and, and help us with our research that is ongoing. So the DISCO's DNA combines four main elements. There's the commons peer-to-peer -peer element that DISCO's are self-organized systems that steward resources to meet human needs while leveraging the power of networks. The DISCO DNA is also connected to open co-ops, combining open source and commons principles with the cooperative and social solidarity movements. Also open value accounting enables value by, uh, enables value sovereignty by rewarding meaningful contributions to projects rather than just wage labor. And the other piece is feminist economics, because we need to challenge the ordinary economic abstractions that ignore reproductive and care work or uh, devalue them. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about how we go from platform uh, co-ops to open co-ops to discos, except to say that if you don't already know about uh, platform cooperatives, um, they're cooperatively owned, uh, democratically governed, governed businesses uh, that are established 
with a computing platform and they have a, a website or a mobile app uh, or some other kind of protocol that facilitates the sale of their goods and services. So basically it's a cooperative organization that has a digital layer. So in one way, DISCOs are similar to that because we are using software as a, a layer to help us with our trade among DISCOs and also managing the value flows within a given disco. Um, so traditional, <laughs> this, this slide is kind of weird because it looks like it's saying this traditional cooperatives are greater than platform cooperatives are greater than open cooperatives, but no, it's like we go from one to the other to the next and we hope that discos are going to be the new generation. In traditional cooperatives, workers have ownership and control. In the platform cooperatives, you add a digital platform uh, or some form of digital economy. In open cooperatives, there's a purpose for the cooperative, uh, but the cooperative is, is a commons itself, and it also uh, adds an open source layer. So what I was talking about before about the value of open source, really comes into play with the open cooperatives. But DISCOs add on top of that, the notion of care work and open value accounting and distributed ledger technologies. So the DLTs part is kind of how we're connected with the DAO or with DAOs. DISCOs arose from a community of practice, which is the Guerrilla Media Collective. I often call uh, the GMC sort of the Ur Disco. So these are the folks in the Guerrilla Media Collective. They are best known for their translation work, but they also do digital media work and design work as well. The initial co-op is a, a translating co-op that's been alive for about eight years. And uh, somewhere around three years ago, they uh, sort of changed up the way that they were working and at the same time added two other pieces to their cooperative. So two other sort of organizations that were under the umbrella of the Guerrilla Media Collective. In each one of these sub organizations, people would work on the projects the livelihood projects. They would work on the care work that makes it possible to even have an organization. And they would also do what they call love work, which allows them to uh, do work that adds to the available commons in the world. So for the translation team, an example of that is that they see a text that they think should be available in a language that they can translate into. And so they might reach out to the publisher and or the author to get permission. And, um, and then they can translate that for free and make it publicly available for free. So the people in that group are Anne-Marie, Brana, Laura, Sarah, Sylvia, Stocco, and Timothy. Um, and I told you all of that stuff. This is what the Gorilla Translation website looks like. And I highly recommend, there's a link at the end of this presentation. I recommend going and checking it out because there are a lot of really interesting articles that they've translated uh, into English and into Spanish as needed, um, just uh, around a lot of the concepts that I know that the Bloom Network is interested in. So the DISCO framework is based on the governance model that was developed for Guerrilla Translation and the Guerrilla Media Collective. And so I explained this a little bit. There's pro bono work, which is your love credits. There's the agency work, which they call the livelihood credits. And there's the care work. Whoops. There's not a picture for the care work, sorry. Um, so one thing about this is that 
they want to make sure that everybody gets paid for all of their hours, um, including those love work hours. So what they have done is they've set up sort of an, uh, an equation of how many hours within uh, a given week or a given month you put into each of these buckets. Um, and if you put more into one of those buckets, then that rolls over to your next cycle. So you might do more love work this month, but then next work you top up your care work or you top up your livelihood work. Um, the livelihood work is the work that's bringing the money into the organization and paying for everything else that's going on. So the model value tracks, commons oriented pro bono work, ethical market livelihood work, and the care and reproductive work for a fair distribution of income. The seven DISCO principles are that uh, they are statutorily oriented towards the common good. Um, this might also just be said, um, you know, it statutorily makes it sound like it's legally required. So you might think of a B Corp in the United States, but not every, uh, not every jurisdiction is going to have something like a B Corp. So um, you write it into your bylaws, you write it into the DNA of your organization that you're going to be oriented towards the common good. Uh, it's multi-stakeholder in nature. So um, who, who are the stakeholders in your organization? Yes, it's the workers, but it's also the people who are uh, receiving your, your services or your products that they have some, uh, some say or some input into what you're doing. Um, we actively co-create the commons. We want to put more things out into the world that everybody has access to. Um, people on this call might be familiar with uh, the food is free movement. That is an example, right? Food could be totally free. There's, there's lots of stuff growing all around me that most people don't even realize is food. Um, but we've turned it into monocrop, uh, agricultural economy, right? So some people grow food or pick wild food and put them in baskets, baskets in front of their house with a sign saying food is free and anybody can take that food. So that's an example of taking something that has been pulled completely into a monetary economy and putting it back into the commons. Um, number four, uh, discos are locally embedded but they're globally oriented. An example of this is how um, the Guerrilla Media Collective has uh, translated and published books in the past. And when they publish a book and they, they make it available internationally, uh, they coordinate with different printers in different parts of the world so that things can be printed locally and shipped uh, a shorter distance instead of shipping from everywhere to everywhere in the world from oh, say I'm space. Um, so there's a global network, Hello, but each Bustanala. piece of the global network is locally oriented. Hello, my name is Jonathan Guzman and I'm a senior at Columbia Secondary School. And this is our app, Think About It. This app was here high school and college students. Yeah, in the background. Uh, there we go. I can't figure out where it's coming from. Okay. They just muted I was themselves. Like, You're good. Okay. <laughs> I was worried that it was uh, a video running in the background that I couldn't find. It's like, oh no, what have I done? All right. Um, so number five, centered on care work. Um, so we want to make sure that we recognize the care work that goes into uh, making the organization work. Now, a lot of that is administrative work but it also involves taking the time to make sure that everybody within the, the disco is physically and mentally healthy uh, 
as an example of that, just this last week, uh, our regular weekly meeting that we have on, on Tuesday mornings ended up being three of us just kind of doing mental health support for each other. And it was really, really supportive. And we came out of it with, uh, you know, to-do lists for each of us, but it, it really helped us uh, be able to do the work. So new origins and flows of value. An example of this is uh, some of what we're doing with the software right now. Um, with discos, the idea is that each individual disco is a group of anywhere from two to 20 people, but preferably not more than 20 people. And the reason I was mentioning before with DAOs that uh, a DAO puts all the trust in the algorithm and none of the trust in the people. And with a disco, you really want to have as much trust as possible in your local group that you're working with, right? Um, but the DISCO is distributed cooperative organizations in federation. So you might know your, you know, 15 best friends that you're working with on a daily basis and you have a high level of trust with them. And so you have a way of managing the, the income and the values that you have together. But when you're doing trade or doing larger cooperative projects with another disco, um, you're not going to know them as well. You're going to have a, a different level of trust with them. So you're going to put more of that into those sort of digital contracts. And you're going to have to figure out how you're going to trade. And those trades might not be dollars money or euros money. You might be trading with each other based on, you know, the value of bananas or the value of uh, an hour of massage therapy or, <laughs> you know, some other value. Uh, and one of the ideas here is that we can create different types of economy or tap into the many different types of economies that already exist for these different cooperative partnerships. And we're primed for federation, which goes right back to what I was just talking about, about having your local disco and also being connected with all of these other groups that are also discos and being able to do exchanges and work collaboration across. If you'd like to learn more about this, uh, check out disco.coop slash manifesto. There's a sort of short version, and then there's a much longer version, uh, which comes in several chapters. You can follow all of the disco stuff, uh, disco.coop. You can get general information at hello at disco.coop. If you'd like to reach out to Stocko, he's at stocko at stocko.works, and Anne-Marie is Anne-Marie at disco.coop. Uh, you can find them on Twitter at at Stocko P2P or at AMU Trattel. Um, Stocko.works is Stocko's personal blog. The gorillatranslation.org is the website that I was telling you about that has all those really fantastic uh, articles that you might find interesting. Uh, CommonsTransition.org is a really fantastic um, uh, primer on different types of commons uh, platforms, different ways to do cooperative organization. And I honestly have no idea what freefairandalive.org is. I did not put that in the slides, but I left it in because it's probably interesting. I just haven't had time to look. Uh, and if you'd like to sign up for the Commons newsletter, it's at commonstransition.org slash newsletter. And if you'd like to follow me or Geeks Without Bounds, uh, we're at gwob.org. You can email info at guob.org to get a hold of anybody in our core team to ask a general question. If you'd like to reach me, I'm Alicia at guob.org. 
my Twitter is at Lisha Vita and uh, Guab's is at Guab Org. <laughs>